Drug company Pfizer announced this week that they could have a vaccine that is 90% effective with treating coronavirus. Almost immediately, stock prices went nuts. Will this vaccine mean an end to property prices going up? Or will it supercharge prices into 2021? In this video, we're gonna look at how a COVID vaccine will impact property prices, what will happen if Australian borders stay closed, and whether a delay could be disastrous for Australian property prices. So if you're thinking about buying a property in 2021, you'll wanna keep watching. So where are we at right now? The Pfizer trial is one of four potential vaccines the Australian government is looking into. And Pfizer has announced that their vaccine is more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19. And the Australian government was collectively going around doing high fives saying, this is it, we're solved, we're moving on. And while the government's celebrating, scientists have been a bit on the fence. As a scientist, I will have to wait for other data before I can decide whether or not it's really as promising as it sounds. So while the government's going around celebrating and popping corks, it's not 100% sure whether or not this vaccine is gonna live up to the hype. And as for timeframes, they've been pretty vague that the vaccine could land at any time in 2021. So really, this could play out into one of two scenarios. So let's go through the first scenario, assuming that the vaccine doesn't get released in 2021 and we've got borders shut for another 12 months. But before I do, remember to hit that subscribe button. Demographics and specifically population growth are one of the biggest impactors and influences on property prices in Australia. Looking at historical figures and studies on Australian property, it's clear that as the population has increased, so has property prices because there's more people, there's more demand, and there hasn't been enough supply to keep up. And over the last decade, net overseas migration has been the biggest contributor to Australia's population growth, contributing over 2.2 million people. According to some analysis, the closure of Australia's borders has led to a 97% drop in permanent and long-term overseas arrivals in April 2020. And based on this model, if Australia's borders remain closed, there could be a 4% drop in our population. We haven't seen such a big drop in population since World War I. Even in the Great Depression, annual population growth remained at 0.7%. So things could look pretty bad if the borders don't open up next year. Based on the models, the markets that are gonna be most impacted are Sydney and Melbourne, where most migrants first go. Figures from AMP have also supported this. The fall in net migration over the 2021 period will reduce housing demand by around 80,000 dwellings. That will mean new housing demand will fall to 124,000 in 2020 and 118,000 in 2021, compared to over 200,000 in 2019. And this is also why the government's tried to prop this sector up with the Home Builder Grant. AMP's own forecasts assume that a vaccine would be available sometime in 2021. So as you can see there, there's a bit of a bounce back, but if it gets delayed, the line could keep going down. So wrapping it up, population growth is a major contributor to household price increases. And with Australia's borders remaining closed, this could take a nosedive in 2021. The good news is the earlier a vaccine comes out, the more likely they're gonna open up the borders and population growth can resume. So then what happens next? So we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with the vaccine. If migration can resume around the middle of next year, then the population growth will increase, it'll reduce that demographic pressure, there's gonna be more people and prices could go up. Even in the near term, CoreLogic is saying they estimate property prices to go up because of loose monetary policy. We've seen talk of the government relaxing some of their responsible lending legislation early next year, which could mean they're gonna be less concerned about Uber Eats and more concerned about probably putting more money out the door. And as we've seen in the past, the easier the flow of credit, the more people that are out there and the higher prices will go. The caveat to all this is CoreLogic have even said that there's a lot of pent up demand from people sort of sitting around this year. And they're expecting that to calm down in the early parts of 2021. And although Pfizer got a massive headline generating press release, the fact is it wasn't a scientific study subjected to peer review. I think as much as you can get excited about headlines and vaccine results and the borders opening up, you've got to run your own race. As we've covered in other videos, property is about the time in the market, not your timing. You've got to think about long term. So if you're thinking about buying and selling in the next 12 months, then yeah, it might not be a great idea. It could be volatile. As Warren Buffett says, you can't time the market. It's anyone's guess. What do you think is going to happen in 2021? I'd love to know. Leave a comment below. I respond to every one of them. If you do need help with finance, make sure you hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au. Until next time, guys. See you later.